Hey everybody, and welcome to this week's live episode of the DVC Show. I am your host, Paul Krieger, and I am so happy to be joining you all live with my lovely wife, Amy Krieger. And we brought some friends along for the ride too. Hey everybody. Hello. <laughs> I don't know why I got an accent. Welcome, all of a sudden, welcome. But uh, we are here. We've got John Sakari, aka Big Fat Panda, in the house with us tonight. Welcome We've home. Got we got Jeff Haslam. I'm switching it up. I'm going to Jeff next. Finger gun Jeff Haslam. You'll understand welcome, that welcome, more in a couple welcome. weeks after a couple other shows. And then you've got Mr. Trader Sam himself, Derek DeBoer. Hey now. <laughs> now, for those of you that are just tuning in wondering why we all look like we just you know, got off uh, a, a Caribbean cruise or we just got back from Alani or maybe from the Polynesian, say, we are celebrating. <laughs> We are celebrating the best news that, that has happened in the past week, which is the fact that the Polynesian is going to be a single association with the tower and the bungalows and everything else. And the historic problem of the Polynesian has been fixed. And we are all super excited that it is fixed. And I hope you all are excited too. So we are Excited about that, and that's what we're starting off the show with. And Derek messaged us this morning and said, hey, we should all wear something that's Polynesian. And no one, when I tell you no one, no one read his message whatsoever. And in the, what past, lies? Lies. in the past five to seven minutes, this entire group of people have gone through 12 wardrobe changes um, and have been frantically trying to find uh, shirts to wear uh, so that we can celebrate this uh, momentous Disney Vacation Club news. But uh Thank you all who have joined us tonight. And as uh, I know a little bit off our regular schedule where we normally have a show go up on Monday, but we, we didn't have time to really film the, the news and all of the important information that came out of that, that condo association meeting, mainly because Amy and I were on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean for eight days. So that's a story for a different time. But, uh, but because of that, uh, we decided why not go live tonight answer all of your questions um connor says hey dad um so i oh it does not could... yes it oh does my is, God. That, is that derek is that literally my son is that yes. your son yes Aww. that's a man so cute oh, oh my that. God, that's that's so that's his funny. Thing. he is so <laughs> proud of his dad like i'm just gonna put it right over top of your face like look at that what's I up baby do... i love you I'm just glad Aww. that he's real because sometimes I no. think that Derek just invents his children to get out of stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Go do your homework. Yeah. Uh, go do your homework. Um, also, I just want to chime in on this. So, uh, Liquid Ice is Ryan Chung. Um, and uh, Ryan, you all wondering. should know from DVC Fan. And he messaged- I need to know the story of why that's Ryan's name. It sounds like a stage name. Like, liquid ice that's his name well i asked my, i asked equal questions because i he he's now a moderator for our chat for tonight's show and um he sent me a message and i said just comment in the chat and then i can make you a moderator that way uh for tonight's chat and he goes okay i'm liquid ice and i'm like are you being serious right now because like <laughs> i'm not just gonna willy-nilly just make someone with the name <laughs> liquid ice Wow, he uh, still a, has his uh, screen name yeah. for when he was a teen. That was his R handle. It was Probably like his AOL. Um, yeah, his AOL what was it called? Name. AOL handle back in the day. <laughs> what um, was that called? AIM. AIM. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember your away messages and like when they got like really dark and they were like quotes and things and people? No, I was too cheap. I had to shut my computer off so my mom could call people. <laughs> 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 I I wasn't I didn't have enough money to leave my way messages up. No. Well. Well, um we're off to a raucous Can I, start. Your pocket is hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Can I fix that? Sorry. <laughs> my pocket was hanging out. Uh well, thank you all for joining us tonight live. Uh if you guys do have questions, we're going to try to get to as many as possible in the chat, so put them there. Amy's going to be moderating. We're going to kind of moderate that uh this in several different places i know we've got all kinds of people saying hello um and uh aaron is saying hello aaron aren't you at 
Aaron's at Disney World right now, I'm pretty sure. So. Oh, hi, Aaron. Yeah, I was going to use my phone. Can you just make that bigger? Because that's way easier <laughs> that to see. That box bigger? Yeah. No, I can't. Aww. So You've got this box down here, and you've got that box over there. Is that get bigger? Uh, Maybe. I need, like, I need bifocals for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's better. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. The three of us are just sitting here going, okay, when you guys are done. <laughs> yeah, you let us Everyone. know when you want us to say words. <laughs> never we're just gonna randomly <laughs> we're just gonna randomly throw things on the screen and make you guess about them but uh all right what? we are here to discuss some disney vacation club news i know some people have some comments and some questions we'll get to those a little bit later on but the the big thing that i really want to kick off tonight's show with jeff haslam took one for the team last week and i think we all just need to give him a round of applause um just for yes. his his commitment no to the cause. no no um, cause Jeff got to experience his first ever, his first ever, uh, DVC condo association meeting. And he did all of the reporting from the field for us and was frantically messaging us and just texting us the word poly to which none of us understood what it meant. And, uh, um, but he, he did a great job covering the event and sending us all of that information. And I want to kick off the show with getting just Jeff's raw thoughts how is the condo association meeting, Jeff? Oh man, that's a great time. Like if you ever have the chance to go, like bring a bucket of popcorn and just relax. Like it's, it's a good time. There's definitely people that take it a little more serious than, than the rest of us, which is great. Um, they're the ones asking the great questions. Um, first of all, and I also want to say to people that came up and said, hello, thanks a lot for doing so. We, we love meeting you guys out in, out in the world. And, uh, I can't remember. I'm terrible. I'm really, really bad with names. I will never, ever, ever remember your name. I'll remember your face when I see you again. But the guy that was sitting next to me that was giving me the play-by-play -play was amazing. I, want, I think his name was Brian. But anyway, he was great. So, um, but yeah, it was a good time. It was, it's funny how it goes from lovey and welcoming and here we are to... What meeting to, were you we're at? We're going to get really, really boring and serious <laughs> about what has to be done. Yeah, no, he's right. Like Mickey and Minnie like dance around oh, sometimes yeah. and then they. So yeah. this one it was they showed the Once Upon a Studio to get everybody mm -hmm. kind of in the mood and then immediately switched to um, kind of what's coming next and, and slideshow after slideshow about all the things that they're proud of. And, and to their credit, they did a lot of great things this year. Then it got weird because they got all official and they had to vote on stuff. And, <clears throat> and <laughs> that's how they do it, Jeff. They're like, ha, ha, oh boy. Hey, everybody. Here's your Jeff, Here's I think you got, you got muted or something. I don't think so. Am I oh, not no, talking? There it is. No, you maybe just, it was just Derek. Maybe talking. you just had temporary deafness it, or something. No, I swear he went out. I don't think okay. I don't think it happened. I'm crazy. Uh, also, just quick <laughs> shout out um, to the, the lovely man, uh, John Scary um, Panda in the house tonight because he is battling a cold and he is champing through this at the moment um, with some. And some he nice... took NyQuil like five minutes ago. So if he says things that are <laughs> and just... some an hour ago, too. So it's double NyQuil. So we <laughs> he falls asleep. If he we're falls sorry. asleep. Just let us know and we'll nudge him awake. But um you know, we uh we actually kicked off this evening it's it's now 7 40 eastern standard time and, thank you uh, adventure art jeff's mic did no, cut out i knew i'm not, not a, crazy that's not a real comment at all um <laughs> Chris owen helper thank you uh but uh yeah no we've we've been doing this since about five o'clock this evening we've been filming some other shows um that are on the way uh for for you lovely folks and uh so yeah, oh, thank you. Ty the Rod said, "Love seeing Panda on Walt Disney World News today." Yes, we watched thank it you, too. Tyler. Thank oh, you, yeah. Tyler. Entertaining. Awesome. It was a, it was very entertaining. Mm -hmm. There were some hilarious moments, and uh, the Price is Right thing. I was shocked uh, at how big yes. the studio was. I was, was. wondering why Paul was, was watching so... the Price is Right from my office. I could hear it. <laughs> It felt like being on the show. Because I'm so supportive of this amazing person. And I was so sad, Panda, that you did not get to play the Mountain Climber game. Because that is the game Me that too. I would have wanted to go in uh, playing totally. as well. So, um, Jeff, they keep saying you're muted. I'm really no. not. I promise. Oh. Can you hear me? Oh, uh, yeah. You know I think what? our what? delay's back. Our Jeff delay's back. That, that happens. It's only with uh -oh. Jeff, though. Oh, no. <laughs> Talk now. 
He's still waiting or not. Hold on, to hear you say. I'm resetting a something. Is that any better? Oh there yeah, yes. That's beautiful. Yes. Whatever you reset, that was great. What was it? All right, uh, my preamp. <clears throat> oh, you've got a high tech setup now, don't you? Yeah, we're we're rocking <laughs> and rolling. Check the blinker fluid. Someone said. Yeah. Check the Blink, blinker fluid. Blinker fluid is is <laughs> set. So. Um, and and every now, like, week I feel like Jeff has like a different background. Like every single week, sometimes it's his house, sometimes it's a painting. Now I'm not sure what that is behind you, Jeff. It's the so, blinds to the window. <laughs> so we're gonna get here for some of the the real news that that most people wanted, which is uh, what happened at the condo association meeting. But um, Jeff, you mentioned they kicked it off with the once upon a studio short. And that was and that was great. Yeah, and it was surprising to me how many people hadn't seen it yet. Like the cheering and stuff that happened after. Like it was actually a good way to start the show, start the the festivities. Yeah, there's been a huge connection with uh, Walt Disney Animation and DVC this year. We saw it on the DVC member cruise, mm-hmm. um, celebrating the 100 years of Disney Animation. But yeah. that short um, is just oh, something spe- spectacular. Absolutely, you know, just brought the house down, brings tears to your eyes. So if you've not had a chance to see that, I, I believe it's still live on Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Yeah. Uh, you can see yeah. a you can see a preview of it, I think, on YouTube. But uh, it just uh, just an amazing thing. It's like Hopefully, seven minutes. Watch it. Seven. Now, minutes. did it get a reaction, Jeff, from the from the crankety condo association people, or did they just sit there in silence after? <laughs> so crankety. none of them were out on stage yet. It was only the host that had come out. And she, of course, plugged it. And then when when Bill, when when he came out, he definitely plugged back into it and tried to go for the fills. But love the guy, monotone voice, got real boring real fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, uh, we tried to recap as best as we could as you texted us uh, sort of the news. Um, so. Let us know along the way if we miss anything throughout all of this. But they For kind sure. of recapped a lot of the highlights of the of the year, which we are going to be doing in an upcoming episode of the DVC show, where we actually go through our 2023 year in review and all of the, the fun stuff that happened in 23. Shout out to in the chat, um, Lauren Dela Cruz, who is amazing and does so much behind the scenes with DVC fan, but she writes an article every year, which is the 2023 year in review and that'll be going up um probably right around the time that that video goes live next week so um just thank you lauren as always for that because we get to discuss all of that kind of fun stuff but uh they talked about you know disneyland hotel that's been a big thing that uh that has happened this year and uh jeff you told us they kind of plugged that pretty hard and all of the all all of the accomplishments they did and and I don't know if it's because they've already been getting backlash from Boardwalk or what, but they went all in on how decorated it is and how themed it is and focused on all the artwork. And it was, it, <laughs> it, it's very clear that there's a weird line between the cabins that are coming, Disneyland Tower, and what they've done with the Boardwalk. So they, it's, it's like, uh, it's like Bruno. We, into don't, it. we don't talk about Boardwalk. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Still a lot I'd like to walk. <laughs> Derek, I'll go right ahead. I don't, it makes me so sad. Like truly, it makes me so sad. And I'm a boardwalk owner for almost you know 20 years. That's my home resort. I, I love it. I live it. I breathe it. And everything that I've seen, it just makes me so sad. You cannot take the Disney out of these rooms. You can't. And you can't just put new paint and new furniture and put a couple of Disney pictures on the wall with characters and say, okay, here's your new room. You can't. It's not the same. The old boardwalk rooms and many of the old rooms used to have all those like, you know, distinguishable Disney differences, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it was in the carpet or a lamp or, you know, some kind of an ornate fixture here or there, not just a picture on the wall or a pull down Murphy bed that has Chip and Dale and say, okay, we're all done. There's your Disney room. That That is what I miss. And I'm not a fan of those rooms. Everything that I've seen from those rooms, it makes me very, very sad. But that's me. Jeff, did anybody mention it at the meeting, like that they were disappointed with those rooms? Like, is DVC aware that 
the majority are disappointed. Uh, it was not brought up at the condo meeting at all. There, the questions were elsewhere. Okay. Just the the comments coming in as you rant, Derek, are are just you know uh, spot on with you. You know, turned into a boring white modern courtyard by Marriott. Um, they should reconsider hiring Eisner just to do resort theming again. Um, taking the whimsy (laughs) out, like it was, it was a whimsical and then I've I've said this before and you know, many people defended me, but truly I think when you're staying and you're a Disney vacation club member, you want to be beaten over the head with pixie dust. You do. If you didn't want pixie dust, go stay at a courtyard by Marriott. Go stay on iDrive. Mm-hmm. Go stay somewhere else. <clears throat> when we're at Disney, I want to walk in and every little thing I want to say, oh my God, that's so Disney. This is so unlike anywhere else I could ever stay. And unfortunately, everything is just becoming like, okay, yeah, we have, uh, what did we do for Sar- 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 Saratoga? Yeah, so we did that. So let's do that. But we'll change the theming and put like boardwalk cartoon pictures on, on the wall. I just, mm-hmm. I'm not a, not a fan of it. And a, and a big, to- big totally thank- with you, Derek. <laughs> big, big thank you to Mary Liddig, uh, who um, is, has given us all a chance to see the Boardwalk rooms. So actually, tomorrow, Amy and I are headed over to Boardwalk. We're going to film uh, Mary's uh, Boardwalk studio and share it with you. We're also going to get Mary's thoughts because I think uh, Derek, you told <laughs> us she's not a fan either, um, and she's such Mary a nice- apparently has that door just propped open. Everybody's just coming <laughs> Lauren got to Lauren got to go in the yeah she's got like an open house sign that she sits out outside the the uh, thing. Mary is so amazing. If you're not in the DVC fan Facebook community or any oh. of the online Disney Vacation Club communities, she is all over those, and um, she just has so many amazing stories. Uh, we've gotten to meet her a couple times. We are going to get to meet her t- tomorrow to film her room. And then actually we're going with Jeff and his family and uh, we're taking Mary with us to the Hoopty holidays tomorrow night and, uh, and doing Hoopty do and eating some fried chicken. And if you, if either of you two start to complain about not getting invited, I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> they didn't invite uh, any of us. They say this. They just, email. Don't, they just so don't read. They, no, the, they do not read. Uh, it was offered. It was. Just show, just it show was. up, and we'll sneak in. You know, I'm going to be reading next time for sure. If I know there's food involved, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. Three, it's I'm no just going to go to bacon. Mary's room because at at the boardwalk, I think I'll just go see that room. <laughs> no, you know what we could do? We can give a Tupperware to Amy and just get some chicken back later. <laughs> yep, and I feel like we do need to. We just went all in on the boardwalk conversation and never really addressed it. But boardwalk is currently under a full hard goods refurbishment, so they are fully uh, gutting all of the rooms at the boardwalk. Some of the early rooms have reopened at this point, uh, which are, I believe, boardwalk, boardwalk view. view. Mm-hmm. And so some of those rooms people are getting into. So we're starting to get our first glimpse. But if you saw any, uh, first off, over on dvcfan.com, we did post a first look of the rooms. Uh, several weeks ago. So there are some original photos uh, from that refurbishment so that you can get an idea of what those look like there. And then also, um, if you've seen the rooms on the inside of the resort, these things are basically identical. There are very, very few differences, um, a little bit of artwork here and there that that differentiate the the inside of the rooms and the and the then the boardwalk villas and it's sad they've as as you guys said they took the whimsy out of the boardwalk you know we grew up loving wildwood new jersey and and it is whimsical on the boardwalk and it's crazy and it's fun and it's colorful and that's kind of what the villas have always stood for the exterior of the villas have always been colorful there's whimsy out on the boardwalk there's the games um you know there's a lot of fun going on and the inside also kind of had a different sense of boardwalk history it was a little bit more of the early boardwalk days, a little bit more classy top hats. Um, and so that was displayed in both the, uh, the white exterior of the boardwalk inside of the resort and the interior of those rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, the old, and- just, just so you know, the old hallways used to be, and there's probably many people that may remember this, but that used to look like picket fences. So all the way down the hallway, it would be like a picket fence halfway and then the rest so even just walking down the uh sometimes notoriously long boardwalk (laughs) hallways was Mm -hmm. cool because it was themed now it's just paint that's it 
Uh, so Stephanie Burner said, if nothing else, I hope that the boardwalk swaps out those awful stools for some real chairs in the table. Um, how are you supposed to eat or do any work? Um, she said, ugly rooms are one thing, but they should at least be functional. That is one of the things that I am kind of I'm disappointed in with some of these new refurbs. So we saw it at Boulder Ridge. We are seeing it at Boardwalk where they are getting rid of the table and chairs and they're you're giving you like some random stools and then your coffee table maybe pulls up and becomes a pseudo table um but that's not like the best case scenario for a lot of people so yeah i i really do miss the table and chairs uh for boardwalk and boulder ridge they were originally part of the pull down single bed but I feel like those rooms, you know, like Copper Creek does a really nice job and has a nice little table and chairs there. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like streamlined. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's functional. It looks good. Like they could have something that sized and I don't know, fit it yeah. in somehow. Well, and it's also, <laughs> um, you know, getting back to the condo association meeting with what we know they are capable of. And Jeff, you know, tell us they gave us the big reveal of what these <clears throat> cabins are going to look like. And they went all out with the Disney theming in these new cabins that are coming to Disney's Fort Wilderness. They did. And, you know, it's it's kind of one of those things that it was a weird juxtaposition to have them, all of us in the back of our minds, just having seen Boardwalk. And then they were talking about all of the hidden details that are going into these cabins and all of the, like, bring your magnifying glass because there's hidden Chippendales and, and bears and Donald Ducks. And there's, there's crap everywhere. <laughs> For lack of a better term and you know the bunk beds are still going to be a thing it just it blows my mind that this boardwalk and look hilton head too for that matter are just such a departure from what we're used to and what they're still doing elsewhere disneyland hotel the cabins um i don't know i don't understand it myself i mean yeah this this concept art of the cabins look i i, I think it looks great <laughs> i um, like you know, it yeah if you're a fan of the older cabins that used to be at Fort Wilderness, you're probably not going to be a fan of these because they're more of a more of a contemporary. It's almost like that glamping mindset that they're bringing to the cabins. But we we've said this. It's it, you know we're going to be saying it in some upcoming shows as well. We Amy and I love the cabin concept so much that we're now considering potentially selling our boardwalk points and and buying into the cabins mm -hmm. uh, for multiple reasons. Um, one of them being um, some furry friends that are sitting in this room with us that um, we could bring to our DVC resort with us. And that's a big selling factor for us. Yeah. Um, so I'm noticing some different comments, both on Boardwalk and uh, with the cabins. Uh, there's some people that, that really like the Boardwalk <laughs> refurb, some people not so happy about the cabins, especially like you said, um, not as not rustic enough, not cozy cabin enough. So interested, interested to see your opinions because sometimes they're different than ours. So to let us know in the comments, uh, what do you think of the Boardwalk Refurb? What do you think of the Fort Wilderness DVC cabins? It's just interesting to see what different people, you know, get from them. Someone said they, they look like modern tiny homes and not really rustic cabins. But I'm not a woodsy girl, so that's why I like them. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'd rather have a tiny home than a cabin, yeah. Let me ask you a question, Amy and Paul. If you do sell and then they refurbish, you know, 10 years from now, whenever the next one is, and it's great, are you going to feel bad that you sold? No, I think we're looking at multiple factors, including the okay, fact the that dog, we're- the dogs. Okay. We're, yeah. Well, first of all, we're local. Um, Boardwalk does have a decent amount of inventory in the pool garden view. So we have actually, the last couple of times we stayed at Boardwalk, we've not actually used our Boardwalk points because um, we're booking a little more last minute than we had before. Uh, we're looking at the expiration day of 2042 coming up. We're looking at, you know, multiple things. Um, and then the fact that we we now have more dogs and we would love to just be able to take them for a weekend and take them to the dog park at Fort Wilderness and walk around. And it would be a very Eat short trip, chicken. but get takeout fried chicken because we would not be leaving them by themselves. But <laughs> I, I, I'm just there for the fried chicken. Really? That's, that, yeah. that's worth $30,000 in my opinion, but 
The uh, amount of money that you're going to save by not having dog sitters is going to be tremendous. So, that's oh, true. Yeah. So, so <laughs> speaking of this, this ties perfectly in. Nice segue, Derek. Um, but <laughs> we last year for the holidays, we ended up um, flying back home and finding a dog sitter back here. And if anyone is familiar with Rover or anything like that, when it comes to the holidays, it's like triple rate if you're trying to find a dog sitter. And it's impossible. It's all, and, I mean, yeah, everyone goes You home, have like you know? two or three people yeah. to yeah. choose from because <clears throat> everyone comes to Florida for vacation. Everyone leaves Florida for the holidays, it feels like. I mean, Jeff, you're even going back to Utah. We're um, going. We're going away. Yeah. Or maybe we're just all crazy people and Panda and Derek <laughs> are the smart ones that actually stay in Florida and don't go anywhere. But I'm going I'm to Utah going like three somewhere. times. But in Florida. <laughs> but um but dog sitting is so expensive. Rob Rob just said that as a comment and I agree. So it was so expensive last year that when we compared it, we decided this year that we are driving home for Christmas with the dogs and we rented a cabin back home in a local park and we're just gonna stay there with the dogs <clears throat> and go back. And it's cheaper than if we had a dog sitting. Right. Um, and we're excited. And our we family. get to have our dog. Yeah, yeah. We to, our family gets to see our new dogs. We get to actually spend Christmas with our dogs, which I can't tell you the last time that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a it's been a while. So um, how much were you paying? How much were you paying? A lot of money. More I mean, than we a hotel. pay we have we have two dogs, <laughs> so we pay a hundred dollars a day to come and stay in our house with the dog. It was so, so we 100. were gone at least a week and it was like $2000. But this was Christmas. Christmas too, so it was like more. Yeah. God. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. so there's a nice little random random uh, we're segue. missing a ton of questions. Are you are we coming back to those? Uh, we'll get to some, um but we we probably <laughs> won't have time to answer them all uh in the, in the course of the show. We've already been going for a half hour and we haven't even gotten to the most exciting news of the, of the <laughs> evening. Um, a couple that did come out about um, uh, the cabins and stuff like that. Michael did say this. Um, speaking of Fort Wilderness, what are the chances we see the Reflections DVC expansion coming back into play? Uh, Michael, check out our 2023 DVC year in review show that we that we put up pretty soon because we did have some early thoughts about Reflections coming back. I will stand behind what I've said. I didn't say this, I think, on the last show, but I'll stay behind what, what I've said, and then I'll get these guys' thoughts which is that um, they will utilize that site one day. It will not be reflections. It will be a different concept. Um, they will not let something sit like that for that long without reinventing and redesigning what they want it to look like, especially because of some of the mixed reviews that they got and also because they basically moved the concept for it over to the Polynesian uh, because that, that, that tower and some of the design elements of it are very, very similar. So um, any, any of you guys have any conflicting thoughts to that? You think it's, it's definitely going to be reflections again, or. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree too. I think, I think they'll do something with it. I still think it's going to be a while. You know, we've already talked about this in other shows. See, he caught out again. <laughs> See? So I, I think they'll wait for a couple of these other ones to go, you know, a little further in before we hear anything, but. I can't imagine they started that infrastructure without something in place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they, and they still have a lot of the, uh, the underground. Uh, they, I think they got about like halfway through some of like the sewage and the underground like construction. And then there's, if you actually look at the site close enough, there's still like giant pipe parts that are just like sitting out. And it's like, how are they going to know where to tie in what? Like, they're just going to have to go back through and like rip all of that back out and, and figure out what they're doing, make sure it, it matches. So uh, they've got quite a mess on their hands there, and I think that they're probably still scratching their head. My prediction that, I, that I'll that i say in, a, in an upcoming DVC show is, is that I think we'll get news about a, another new resort probably at D23 in 2024. Uh, whether or not that's at the Reflection site, don't know the answer to that question. We'll, we'll wait and find out. There's also so many other, you know, rumors that have been going around for many, many years. So Pirates Resort, that would be cool. Yeah. That so moving cool. on from the cabins, uh, we'll come back around to some of these other questions here in a little bit, but, um, anything else from the cabins from the meetings, Jeff, that you had notes about, or that was, uh, no, that was, that was pretty much it. Um, and I think that, you know, some of the people that I was talking to after, I think their big concern that they didn't address was, are they going to add another pool? Are they going to add, you know, <laughs> more DVC amenities to make that more of a, 
you know, moderate ish <laughs> resort. And of course we don't know the answer to those questions, but it doesn't appear that they are. Yep. Yeah. Your, your, your beautiful, uh, video and audio delays back also, Jeff. So, oh, um, man, I'll let you hit think. those buttons again, hit those buttons that you were pushing over there again. Uh, see if they, but no, that's a good point. Like in someone, <coughs> someone asked that in the questions, uh, did they say anything uh, about adding DVC amenities to the new cabins? Rob Bazemore asked that, and we haven't had any announcements of any kind of new restaurants, new pools, new anything like that. Um, it would be nice, but at the same time, they're not they're not really adding to the capacity like they are at Polynesian, where yeah. the tower is adding to the capacity. These are the same amount of cabins, pretty much, right? They were already there. Uh, correct. Actually, a little bit, a little, less. little bit less. Um, and, yeah. I, and I will just issue a small correction there. They did when they announced the cabin say that they were going to do some small upgrades oh, okay. throughout the throughout the Fort yeah. Wilderness area. So that's someone about so small upgrades. So we're maybe. not we're not one hundred percent sure what that yeah. means. We've not really seen them go all in with construction just yet. I think they're waiting till after the holiday season because this is the craziest time at Fort mm. Wilderness, both Halloween and the holidays. And yep. so I think they're kind of waiting for uh, yeah for some of that too. And I just wonder if this is going to be more like like a lot of people have said our our little <laughs> taste into DVC moderate level or like what could they add to make it more deluxe? I don't really know. You know yeah. their cabins. So uh, looking towards 2024, they also kind of gave us a, a glimpse, Jeff, of of what's moving on into the future. And uh, part of that was talking about some of the member cruises and some of the some of the cruise sailings that we've got that we've got going on. Correct. Yeah. First of all, can you hear me still or do I need to reboot? We can hear you, but the delay is yep. still there. OK, well, we'll try and limp through for a minute here. Now it's, now um, it's better. It's getting better. Yeah, they they talked about it was interesting to me that they talked about. No. <laughs> Oh, yeah. we, we lost too soon. you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you come, if you need a reboot, we'll come back, Jeff. We'll, we'll let I'll you be right back, back in. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyhow, I love how he was totally perfect for the three hours before we the did. Live show. Yeah, we did. We did. Now, we yeah. could have talked for him, <laughs> like we like Derek did that one day. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, the brontosaurus burger. Yeah. So in uh, regard to the but, cabins, is are you I'm not, not I'm not surprised because they don't have the room, but I wish the footprint was just slightly larger. Yeah, and it's, but it's like not they could right. Fit it's the same. It. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not like I, they don't have like, a little bit more room around there. Oh, they they're they're it. there's is it on? Does it sit on a concrete pad? Mm -hmm. Is it? But I think the, it's the, on like but a I, slab or something. Do you think that slab is a little like? I feel like they could have did two feet more in each direction. Yeah, I don't know. Could have made a guessing. world of difference. You're right. Mm -hmm. just guessing and a lot of people have been asking about potential washers and dryers in the cabins and that wasn't a thing in the old cabins right and so it doesn't mm, seem like that's gonna correct be... we've not heard anything about it just yet so i don't want to necessarily put it out there that it's it's not going to have a washer or dryer or, or anything but um we've not heard anything about it there are laundry <laughs> facilities throughout the fort wilderness cabins so i think we're just gonna have to wait a little bit to mm -hmm. see you know whether or not that um, I would imagine that the point charts would equate to to what you're getting. There's, oh, he's knocking. Hold on, Jeff is knocking at the door. <laughs> was Jeff with hello, a, hello with caller, hello caller. The tutu. <laughs> um, but Please. the the point charts have to line up with if you don't get a washer and dryer, if you know there you've got a bed and a bunk bed all kind of shoved into the same bedroom. Like I feel like that you should be paying the points appropriately for that. I think that it, this is going to be the key question with the cabins is how Disney prices them. And I think they have to keep them in a one bedroom to two bedroom um, <clears throat> per night range or else they will have built a monster that they will never get rid of. Mm -hmm. uh, because if they try to get more than that out of these cabins, you know, you're looking at a, a it, look at the clientele you're selling to, you know, the, the, the people that have, you know, look at, look at the price they pay for those cabins. You've got to make it worthwhile in that regard. These people are not, if, if these people want a bungalow or if they want a Copper Creek cabin, then they're already staying there. 
Um, but this is, you know, what has made the cabins so appealing over the years is that they are more affordable, um, of a property. And so they've got to keep them there or else, yeah, they're, yeah. this is going to not go well. Uh, two, two things really quickly. <laughs> Somebody asked, did I hear that the cabins would only sleep four? Uh, we're pretty sure they're going to sleep six since they confirmed that the bunk beds would be there. The six would be two on the queen bed two one in each single bunk bed and then there yep. is a we do have the photo the artwork that shows the, the pull murphy down. pull down which would also be two more people and that's what the current fort wilderness cabin sleep in the footprint and the layout is very similar yeah. so they should if, sleep six if we look at the artwork that we have right there you've got a murphy pull down bed that that's going to sleep too you've got the main bed that you can see in the other bedroom there that's going to sleep too and then what's not pictured that they did confirm is bunk beds coming to the cabin. So that's at least two people. So yeah. that's that's at least six. So these these yeah. are definitely gonna gonna sleep six. So mm -hmm. yeah, you you nailed it on the head, Paul. When you can't make these obscene, just because when vacation club guides are going to be meeting with families, they're going to want to tell them, okay, so if you get one of these cabins, here's how many nights you can stay. If you buy, you know, two hundred points. For example, you could stay, you know, four or five nights. It's what they did with those bungalows was probably the biggest fiasco of all time. And even all of their early marketing materials, I remember being a vacation club guy at the time, all the marketing materials was all about the bungalows. And then when people would say, well, how many points is it for me to stay here? And you'd say, you know, 9,000. And you're, well, what? Well, I was looking at like a 200 point package. So they quickly changed everything turned into, you know, marketing towards the big glorious studios, which is great, but yeah, you have to, you have to market it from the very beginning. So when they're creating a point chart from scratch, they're going to make sure that these are affordable point wise for sure. Yep. Yep. So we touched on the cruises. We won't spend too much time there because actually the the show that will go up, I believe it's going to be on January 1st to kick off our new year. Um, this crew talks about cruising and we talk all about Disney Cruise Line and we talk about what we love, what we hate, which some of these people hate Royal Caribbean for some reason or another. I don't understand why. But um, There's no it, crispy bacon. No crispy bacon on Royal it Caribbean. It may or may not. Don't ask just, for it. it. Don't ask for it. <laughs> I don't it think it was Royal Caribbean. I think it rhymes with Schmarnable. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even try that. You get attacked hey, by birds. Uh, uh, we did. We did do a show all about cruising because I think that as as Disney Vacation Club members, what Amy and I have picked up on over the past year is that people that are members really enjoy traveling as well. Uh, and just like we do, we enjoy taking cruises. And everyone here has has, has done some cruising. So we talked about some uh, cruises, Disney Cruise Line. We talk a little Royal Caribbean, uh, but we also talk about how Disney cruising relates to both these first wave sailings or these member cruises that Disney Vacation Club does and also the best value of your points when it comes to taking a Disney cruise and what the best route to go <laughs> forth with that might be. So what are you laughing That's at? Com some of these comments are funny. Very funny. <laughs> River Country 2, die harder. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's funny. Before it was River Country thank 2, you, this time it's personal. Who is also a Patreon supporter, so thank you for that. I remember yes, that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just we... like the person that says that I should be hired as a Disney executive to be involved with all of these decisions. That's my new no. favorite friend. No. Super no, Lars. we don't want to lose you. That's your, son. <laughs> That's your son again. He just changed profile names or something. He's we can't lose you. At this point. So. Literally nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. <laughs> I'll go fix your computer. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, we then got into kind of what I what I would say gets us into some of the meat and potatoes of the uh, of of the condo association meeting that we look forward to every single year, and that is the refurbishment schedule. Which um, it, some years we don't know if we're going to get it. Um, we've not gotten it other years. I would say we kind of half got it this year. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, the the announcement of refurbishment plans coming to uh, the resorts. Yeah, I mean, and we have a slide up that, that they posted, you know, on the article where we covered it, but it's basically everything that they haven't done yet. <laughs> and they kind of lumped it all into 2025. I mean, yeah. Bay Lake Tower has kind of always been scheduled for 2024. 
and I don't know if it was a misprint on the slide <laughs> or if whatever, because when she was speaking, she talked about it being 2024 for Bay Lake Tower. But then in their slide, it's not. So I don't know if it's going to wait till the tail end of this that year or or what. But it was just kind of everything left over <laughs> that they hadn't gotten to in a while. So I was, yeah, I was wondering if those were maybe completion dates. Because if you look at 2024, Hilton Head, Boardwalk, Vera Beach, those all started this year in 2023. Some as early as October. So I'm, I, I don't know. I, they don't really tell you. They just kind of throw them up in a year and you have to guess, is it starting, ending? No, and I think it's also important to note that they, they also did not do anything related to letting us know what is hard goods, what is soft goods. But we can right. kind of deduce that by going down the list here. So we know that Hilton Head, that's a full hard goods refurbishment they're doing right now. <laughs> Boardwalk, that's a full hard goods refurbishment. Vero Beach seems to be a soft goods refurbishment that they're doing over mm -hmm. there. Bay Lake Tower. Hard goods all the way. <laughs> just needs gutted from head down. Needed to happen like <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Um, well, and Paul, if I could chime in really quick. They did have a separate slide that was color coded between soft oh. and hard goods. I just wasn't fast enough. Uh, and I haven't been able to find, uh, find that well. information. So. Everybody, oh. it's, uh, let's say goodbye to Jeff Haslam tonight. It's been a good run. <laughs> Uh, no, but we can, I mean, we can easily kind of yeah. walk, walk animal, down the list. Animal like, Kingdom yeah. should be hard goods. Jeff, Copper Creek should be soft Jeff, goods. Jeff is like DVC uh, perks. They're Aww. temporary and you, they can go at any time. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I just have to say, somebody said, I love Panda's new DVC enthusiasm. It's absolutely true. I am loving booking these rooms when I want. <laughs> And not worrying about the price because I'm paying through the nose per month and I don't notice the price. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so uh, Bay Lake Tower, definitely the Animal Kingdom. Those are definitely hard goods. Copper Creek, most likely a soft goods because it's, it's still very new. Saratoga Springs Tree Houses, we kind of predicted that one was coming down the pike. That's mm -hmm. going to be, that a, should be uh, a hard goods. That should be a hard goods <laughs> yeah. because of the timing. And then Grand Californian, glad to at least see it hit the list, but I see them pushing it even further. Um, you know, it's down far on the list, but we've kind of said Grand California desperately needs a refurbishment, but are they going to let it linger just to get those Disneyland hotel points to sell a little bit better? So I don't know. I don't think so. I'm going to come pick it outside. Amy's going to pick it. <laughs> so that's going to be a long journey for a picketing. Uh, okay. They got good food. Um, so yeah, 20 refurbishments and that kind of, that kind of rounds out. That was the crazy thing that I was thinking about at the end of the refurbishment announcement was the fact that that kind of rounds out all of the Disney vacation club resorts that needed to go right. through kind of the yeah. big refurbishment. We're going to come back around now to Old Key, Old West, Key West. I feel like, yeah. Um, and Old Key, but Old Key West was kind of where we start to saw some new colors and stuff. <laughs> the only thing that Old Key West still needs is the, uh, is the Murphy beds. So. Yeah. Uh, so someone said Jeff brought his pooch in for positive traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Can I, I just talk about I'm these sorry, Murphy beds? I'm sorry I didn't get the photo. Here's my dog. <laughs> if you guys weren't these so Murphy mean to beds me. <laughs> are actually pretty comfy, by the way. The Murphy beds? Yeah. I thought like they were going to be like some horrible spring in your back type thing. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty Much good. better than a couch bed. It, it's a mattress. Much. It's a real mattress. A little thinner, exactly. but yeah. Still. I just want, and I and I pray because people that maybe have watched this show know that I'm not exactly. No one the watches this show. And of oh, shut up, Jeff. <laughs> of <laughs> turn your mic off. Of Bay Lake Tower, uh, but I think Me I so desperately want that rehab to just make it worthy of the location that that resort is in. Because right now, it's I've always said it's like a hospital. Like it just feels like a hospital. It just is so cold and nothing warm and inviting. You are right next door to the Magic Kingdom. And I feel like you need to have your resort be <laughs> worthy of that location. So I pray yeah. to God that that Derek, it's it's almost like they know that the location is so great that who cares about the room? Yeah. That's how I felt when I was in it. Oh yeah. our dog Emerson heard heard Jeff's dogs and was shot up was like what is going on? <laughs> um, okay. So I feel like. Every so that got us through basically the, uh, also one last thing. They, I, Jeff, they mentioned Wi-Fi enhancements coming to the resorts. So we're going to get off dial up finally. 
Yeah, they did. Sorry, somebody just knocked on my door and my dogs went nuts. So, oh. um, yeah, they they did specify that they are upgrading Wi-Fi accessibility throughout all DVC resorts. They didn't give any kind of a schedule or a time frame. It was just, hey, by the way, we're doing this. And so Good. it'll be interesting to see. But it does need to happen when you can get better cruise or when, when you get better Wi-Fi on a cruise than you can. In you your know, people DVC, people always complain about Disney Cruise Line Wi-Fi. It was it was very good for mm-hmm. us. It was really good. Wait, no, we were, but you were, we were on you were on the Wish, right? We were wish. on the Wish. Yeah. So it's, it's oh, that different reminds on the me. Wish. Scroll up a little bit. Somebody said they just got off the very maritime cruise. Who was that? Mm, Jarrett C. I think it was him. That's not the right comment, but I remember that name. Were you? Did you get off Friday? There it is. Just, just, just got, got off the, the wish. wish maritime. Yeah. It was awesome. Were you on our cruise? We just that, got off on that Friday. Or he just got off today. So. Well, today is Monday. Oh, it would be the three night. Okay. Three night weekend. Okay, so you so. may not have been on ours. You may have been on the one after. Yeah, I could not connect to the Wi-Fi uh, at the Riviera this week. It just would not. Mm, I've heard, it would, I've it would heard a lot of bad things about Bay Lakes Wi-Fi for five minutes. Yeah, that's what he's saying to Jarrett. Said. Yeah. What do the, so so? What do they have on the ship now? Is it like a plan that like you pay? Because I remember when I worked on it. It, it was like you had to pay. There's different levels you could do, and it would gobble up your Wi-Fi. And my, you know, twenty bucks would be gone within like, you know, five seconds. What do they have now? Yeah, so now it's just basically called like a surf and stream package that you buy. You can buy it for the length of the okay. voyage. So I think for each of us for a four night cruise on Disney, it was somewhere around like hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, but you got to like choose if you want like basic. Better yeah. than basic or stream a whole bunch. Yeah, we so we kind of like, go in the middle. Basics, like you can check some emails and maybe get some text messages. The next level up is like adding on surfing capabilities and maybe you can post something to Facebook or Instagram and, and, and browse those sites. And then the knowing, top tier. Knowing how you're working nonstop, I assume you got the uh, Mac Daddy package? We oh. didn't. We actually, we actually no, did the middle level. We're too cheap I'm for good. that. I'm yeah. way too cheap for that. Even if Jeez. work is, even if work did buy the internet, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So, no. <laughs> ah. We're cheapskates we through are and cheapskates, through. But <laughs> it's good. It's good to hear that our, our, our DVC resorts will soon get uh, DCL quality internet. So, um, <laughs> now my favorite part is, is the part Jeff's that we, would do it. <laughs> my favorite part is the part of the meeting we kind of merge into now which is kind of the business portion of the meeting um so this is the part of the meeting that actually the meeting has to be done for so they have to essentially go through the budget information for 2024 and kind of explain a little bit as to why they picked the numbers that they did for annual dues and once they do so they then ratify the annual dues and ratify the budgets for 2024 (laughs) And what that allows then is for accounting to start preparing those lovely bills for all you folks out there. Which we have had multiple questions about when will the invoices for dues be out? Do you know the answer to that question? Um, I do not know, but I do believe that Disney Vacation Club had announced that member accounting was going to be closed for a couple days coming up or uh, something. And normally that kind of aligns with them kind of preparing the bills and everything like that. So <laughs> I, I would definitely expect that those are going to come out probably by mid month, if not the, the second half of December here. And then dues bills are due, uh, on January 15th. Um, mm-hmm. if you are paying in full, um, or you need to have at least set up your auto pay by that date, and then there's some gray area between January 15th and February 15th, uh, in which if you didn't pay them, you still have a chance to pay them because they're not. What day did you say? I believe it's January 15th. Okay. Someone said oh. December 18th for DVC study. Is oh, that when that is the when invoices? The, the invoices probably. Okay. Yeah, so. Thank you, Angie, <laughs> um, for looking into that. Thank you, Angie. Because yeah. Paul is still on. Oh, look, there's all those dates up there. Those are the days they're going to be closed coming up. Okay, never mind. But probably <laughs> if I go to like annual dues or payments or stuff like that, it'll probably pull up um, that information. So, um, but yes, so those are coming very very soon. You can start to make those payments. I always kind of wait until like January fourteenth just to feel good about it. Like, gotta wait till that. No, no one else. <laughs> Get that little bit of interest before you have to send it off. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, really. Also, take advantage of gift card deals here between now and the end of the year. And if you want a great person 
to uh to, to get ideas off of um although you won't find him because his screen name is liquid ice um <laughs> But uh, Ryan Chung over in the DVC fan uh, Facebook group, he always puts any great gift card deals that are out there because that is the best way to pay your annual dues and and potentially save 10% or more on what you're paying is by, you know, milking those gift cards, get those as, as, uh, as Gio and JC said, get those discounted gift cards now. And then Mr. Incognito here put the, uh, put the sunglasses and glasses and mustache uh, on so he's being incognito in in the chat tonight but uh so any how was the business part of the meeting jeff riveting so yeah it was pretty boring except for this and we haven't really talked about this because they kind of slid it in as a resolution while they were <laughs> meeting as the board before they met as the members group which was they voted to any overages that are collected in dvc dues will no longer be returned as a credit. They're going to just roll it into the reserves. What? Now, you guys know as well as we do that there's never any overages <clears throat> except for COVID when they had to shut down. Yeah. But uh, that was something that they kind of slid in and nobody really talked about it and nobody asked about it. <sighs> it was just kind of like, this is what we did. And that was well, the end I of it. Well, I guess essentially that could still work for the members, right? Because if it goes into the reserves... If when there's it, it, when there's a at, like a refurb coming up or in like rare beach, yeah, but it, head, if there's a hurricane, yeah, I see what you're saying, which is like it would help if there's a if there's a big issue or something like it's that. Less but, we owe later. but sliding into the reserves basically says we're it's always going, money. it's always going to be in the reserves, it's, and we're keeping your money. My, it's not it's like, my money ooh, now. Yeah. yeah, it's not like ooh the. Uh, well, we know. got a deal on the boardwalk refurbishment because we just basically bought bulk for both sides of the hotel. Um, so we saved money and you're going to get some money back. No, that's, that's not going to happen. So, um, yeah. we got rooked. That's great. No, I did not know about that. Yeah. I completely yeah. missed that. He was waiting for now to drop. He that was, bomb. he wanted, he well, wanted, I, he wanted I did the live text it, to be fair, but you know, it kind of went over like a lead balloon. Like nobody even really <laughs> talked about it. Like, one guy asked yeah. a question in the question and answer period and they just said, well, we just figure it's going to help with those big emergency expenses. And so it's all going to work out in the end is how, and, and, and I probably will. Like, if I'm being honest, like the amount of times that we actually overpay and we get a huge credit back, I think what it's happened yeah. twice mm-hmm. in 30 and years. it's been very small for most of us. And very small. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. As a member, I don't even know that I care that much. It was just weird that they just kind of went. Oh, that's a good question, though. Someone asked Super Lars. You guys have funny names. Will we get refunded the reserves when the contracts expire? Probably not. They'll just probably they'll think, find, no. They'll, they'll pass a resolution the year before at the uh, at the condo association <laughs> meeting saying you do not. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Please put have that, a cookie. Please put that on your calendar for if you if you own Boardwalk. Yeah. Put that on your calendar. Twenty forty one. For the condo Condo association Association. of, yeah, so that you can ask that question. Oh, man. Can you imagine the five of us? We're going to be in like a nursing home doing this show, and it's going to be amazing. (laughs) Well, Derek will be dead. (laughs) 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 And you'll still have bad internet, so shut up. It's true. You'll still have bad internet. Yeah, Derek will still have his current computer. Derek is so young. I know, but I got to give him cred. He, he, he. He was a, he did I, watch the love bow on repeat, but we'll we'll let that slide. I, I also Bo just want to point out the island. Anybody watching, you remember Saturday like, nights, Love Boat, Fantasy wow, Island, one two power punch. No better shows on TV. That's I also it. just want to point out too, we're, we give Jeff a hard time about his audio issues sometimes here in the show, and obviously he had one tonight. <laughs> but if you were with us before the show. Jeff, Jeff messages me an hour before. He's like, I'm using a new audio setup tonight. Do you have some time to set it up? And then he goes, so that we don't have to wait around like we do for Derek for a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> and Derek logs into this show at least every time we film. And it is just basically him saying all kinds of things under his breath for a good five minutes while he figures out what, what buttons to push on the computer to make what work properly. Right. And so... I've learned some postcards? I've learned look at me. <laughs> I've learned some new words. Uh, Happy go lucky, right. <laughs> uh someone asked if there's any talk about refurbishments for Alani. I think that the Alani soft goods 
finished. Yeah, Alani right? actually just got a uh, soft goods. It actually occurred, I think, like over the COVID period of time because they it were... was starting like right after we left Alani, yeah. and mm -hmm. that was two years ago. So three years ago? No, I don't. Two years ago, twenty twenty one. Do we go? In yeah, twenty one. Yeah, <laughs> deep plane, deep plane. Is that what? What's is that from Love Boat? Fantasy, Fantasy Island. Island. Oh, it's Fantasy Island. Island. My mom used to say oh. that all the time. Boss, de plane, de plane. Um, <laughs> this She's is, also old. Dude. This has been the running joke most of the evening. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't. Uh, I'll take that back. <laughs> we, we did establish that Amy and I were both not born before these shows came, came around. So, um. <laughs> That's right. You all right there, Panda? Uh, I have Jody, time, but I'm okay. Jody chimed right. in and said, well, now we know what they're going to do with the 2042 contracts, turning the resorts into eight old age homes for retired DVC <laughs> direct agents. So. <laughs> so you'll have that to look forward to. <laughs> Jenny said, Jenny said, Boardwalk Villas nursing home. Here we come. We literally have the best audience in the whole entire world. We do. Yeah. I love Jeff, Jeff, they're mentioning Isaac. Do it. <laughs> if you know love boat you know it we don't know Exciting it because we weren't born yet new. we don't know it <clears throat> i want to oh, make you new. haven't watched any you don't watch anything prior to the year of your birth stop <laughs> no let, I, let me be honest with you amy loves the monkeys i love the monkeys I love the monkeys. I, I saw yes. them in concert. I have, I well, some of them were dead by the time I saw them, but I, <laughs> I, I did see Mickey Dolan's. Oh no, they weren't. Maybe they were all alive. I saw David Jones. He was the first one to die, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw David Mickey's Jones and Mickey alive, Dolan's no? together. Mickey's, Mickey's still alive, no? Mickey's the yeah, only Mickey. one still alive. Peter <laughs> Peter Tork just passed away more most recently. Um, Mickey yes, Dolan's has I, got a new album coming out next week, and it's all covers of like heavy metal thrash songs or something wait it's who wild mickey dolan's are you kidding me where wow. yep i didn't know you liked the monkeys yeah i watched <laughs> i i i i could quote the show like the show the tv show so i wish that up on somewhere the fact that jeff just throws out mickey dolan's nuggets of info is beyond right you know what to me you get a whole potpourri of stuff when you get me on a show <laughs> that's where the trivia is gonna come from people are on a roll polynesian hospital newest dvc project over 55 um, <laughs> that would fit in down in florida here so. someone said derek is our julie mccoy i don't know what that means <laughs> julie is the cruise, cruise director. director she was the cruise director on the low oh. Derek's my julie mccoy she I was way it. hotter than derek <laughs> are you okay, sure back. are you sure Back on track, back on track. Um, so we got through the, that was it for the business portion of the meeting, Jeff. Yeah. Yep. Um, nothing else earth shattering happens. Um, it is a, it is basically a dog and pony show at that point. And then we get into, <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Please, He's up, it's it's I know I've it. asked you this, but set the stage, walk everybody through exactly how this happened. Walk us through it, please. Well, and, and, and so this is moving into the Q and a portion of, of yeah. the, which, which before we get to the last, we're, we're getting to the million dollar question. Don't, don't, don't get us there too soon, Derek, uh, because there's, there, there are some great questions that were asked well before that. And, and Jeff, at this point, when you see the people that start to line up for these questions, do you know, it's about to get good? Like hey, walk, stuff. walk us through. Yeah, I, Jody, yeah. I know who yeah. HR puffing stuff. He's your friend when <laughs> things get rough. <laughs> I am <Yeah>. old. <laughs> Somebody's been eating the Quiff cereal again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm sorry. Quisp, Thanks. whatever it was, I don't remember. Anyway, Quisp, 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 the Quiff cereal. So yeah, oh, I don't want to be derogatory to anybody that asks a question, but you know you're in for a good time. <laughs> because the questions are all over the place. They run the gamut. Um, my favorite one was, are we going to get a DVC resort soon in Virginia? It wasn't, are we going to get any new DVC resorts, you know, out in the world, not connected to Disney? No, it was specific to Virginia. Virginia. Which, I mean, that'd be cool. DC would be awesome. But And, and Jeff, to, to verify too, like it's, it's basically anyone can walk up and ask a question. Like it's not. Yeah. And, and based on your guys' experience from years past, 
I was expecting them to dodge a lot of these. They usually will kind of play it off. Hey, we're only yeah. ask, answering questions about the budget. <clears throat> they took every question that was asked and mm -hmm. they did, they did their fair share of <coughs> dodging them when they had to, but they were direct. How did the they respond they to say. Virginia? Did they just say like, no, <laughs> no, it, it was more of a, we're always looking at opportunities to expand our portfolio. We don't have anything to announce right now. And Jeff, are they Kansas, constantly yeah. like looking off stage at a lawyer that's feeding them the answers or? <clears throat> Probably unofficially. <laughs> I, <think, laughs> I don't think there was waiting in the wings, but I feel like somebody had an earpiece or something because the, the one question in particular was, it was worded, what is Disney doing to save us from the governor? That was the exact wording of the question. And everybody on the Diaz was looking for a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted to take that question. What is that? That sounds, like, oh, a, God, this that sounds like a sounds like a Phil Murphy question that would come. Yeah. <laughs> so, but and there was a lot of questions about you know future refurbs and uh, I was I was really wanting to somebody to ask if they would ever bring back the platinum annual pass you know both coasts but nobody nobody did so. Aww. We're, uh, we're too we're too cheap for that. And they kind of pre-gamed the, the Q&A too a little bit, didn't they, Jeff, with, with kind of they attacking did. some of what they thought would be asked uh, first and for, for, foremost? Yeah, and there, there was like three main things. It was about availability, it was about park reservations, and I'm sorry, the third one escapes me. Um, it'll come to me in a minute, but mainly it was when it comes to availability – we're doing our best. We're, we're, we're trying to find new ways to do things. Um, the rep park reservations was look at all the things we've done. Like you can park hop all day now and you can go after two. And it, it was nothing that really answered any questions, but. Got it. Did, did, did anybody ask them about their IT? Yes. Oh. Really? And th there was two things. What are you going to do to make the website run better? And when do we get an app? Oh gosh, Any yes. Answers? No. What they say? No. <laughs> um, we're we're investing in infrastructure, and we want to want the website to work better. And again, when the app question came up, everybody was looking for a parachute. I don't think they were expecting that question. I don't think it's on their radar. I don't think <laughs> right. they want anything to do with it. Right. And it's kind of like I told Paul on the side. I'm like, I know there's a lot of people that want an app, but that's something that we would have to pay for as members. Exactly. Yep. And it really, I work think right. <laughs> yeah, it would never work right anyway. I think really what we would want to do is see a more mobile friendly website. Mm -hmm. I that's think right. that's a lot easier to do than than giving another app that I have to find in my phone. Yeah. But that's that's just me right. personally. Yeah. Cool. So then we get to the end of the Q and A, and as Derek said, just <clears throat> cue us up. How did what happened? <laughs> How was it set up? It was the last question that they took and, oh, wow. and the, the lady that asked it was, can you, we're all wondering, can you please tell us whether the new Polynesian tower will be part of the existing poly association? And they said they pitched it off to the, to the treasurer of the group. And she said, I think we can announce today that yes, it will be part of the same. Some people heard resort. Some people heard association. I guess we could look at the records and see what they actually said. The minutes uh. are probably out there somewhere. But <laughs> it was in response <laughs> to a right. specific question. And the number of questions that they dodged up to that point that they chose to answer this one, it just tells us what we've already known, that it is going yeah. to be part of the existing association. If the treasure's right. sitting But are there, we sure? <laughs> <laughs> we are sure we're sure so we're I, yeah sure, sure. i think i think the main argument is that they're just like you know we we haven't done the legal work yet things could change like that that yep then reflections could close like we know that we know life happens we know things can change but that's their then, plan and, their and, plan and, is and, for it to be the same yes and this is what people have to realize it's not just a decision of 
Disney saying like a swipe of a pen saying, do I want it this association or that association? <laughs> it's not like they can change their mind last minute. It would, it no. is literally to make a whole new association is years and years and years of work. It is millions and millions of dollars to get registered in every single state and almost every country around the world. So it's not just like a, well, we haven't decided. Maybe next Thursday, I think we will do this. No, that decision is made. That ship has sailed. And like Paul has said, till he's blue in the face, Here, it's done. It's the same here's, association. Here's the thing that you, that we fall back on. I know we talk about this in, in an upcoming show a little bit as well, but you have to understand the fact that they went into this meeting knowing exactly what they probably wanted to say and what they did not want to say and what was on that radar. Um, also, these are highly regulated meetings. We are in the state of Florida. The state of Florida wrote the book on sketchy timeshare, so you better believe it's regulated to keep them coming back. And so when it comes to what they can and can't say, they better be careful. They better know specifically what they're saying and how they're saying it. It's And, and, and I used this example before. It's like if you went to the um, one of the quarterly earnings calls that Disney puts out and Bob Iger says that next Thursday we're going to build a fifth gate. If by Thursday the fifth gate isn't open, there's going to be hell to pay. And there's going to be a lot of people that uh, they have to answer to, both legally, both financially, both in the government. <clears throat> There are a lot of um, things that they have to be careful about. So if they yeah. if they misspoke, if anyone thought that they misspoke, if if they wanted to change just slightly how they spoke, they would have needed to have done that very very quickly and issued a public statement about it, um, or else. Especially with all the news and all the and especially all the websites like ours and others that have been posting that. It, that's what uh, that's the plan and, and also and also coming off of what was an incredible high because jeff you said you know it was basically you know it, it was like a rock concert after that there was there was cheers in the crowd to be sure you know and i know some people have, have expressed concern that she said resort and not association or whatever but you can't look at just the one thing like you have to look at the whole of it like it's kind of a big picture thing it's like you said, Paul, they have been planning this meeting for how long? And they knew the question that was going to come. Yeah. It was written in response to a direct question. Mm -hmm. Everybody cheered. Like if there was some clarification that needed to be given, they would have done it at After that moment. After those cheers would have been that moment. Yeah. <laughs> they, what's they what's knew funny what they to me saying. is that she says, we think we can announce this today. But if the question wasn't presented to them, would they have just let it go? I wonder. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. I probably why, why? They, they probably I, would have they probably would have potentially gone with a, as limited amount as possible but i've alluded to this before i wouldn't have been surprised if it wasn't a, a staged question to a certain yeah i wondered that or i also kind of they kept teasing the whole the whole meeting about we have a couple of surprises at the end of the show or at the end of the meeting and i kind of wondered if that was maybe one of those things because it kind of felt like bill wanted to to give us something and then that kind of let the cart out of the barn, so to speak. And so the only surprise that we were left with was the live singing of the theme song, which. And that's not a couple. Moved you to tears. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fine. She's a beautiful singer. She is. It was a, we, and then we, Mickey and Minnie came out and that was great. So, so as we kicked Aww. off tonight's show with all of our Hawaiian shirts and our, our festive attire there is a reason because we are celebrating because that is a huge win for the polynesian um you know i i think it really solves the problem that that resort has had for so many years um and i can tell you that derek is super excited i can tell you that panda has said that it might be the next resort he buys at um and i think we're all i think we're all excited in our own right um just just because it makes the most sense for that resort, um, and it's a win for members uh, all around. So, any it's, any other uh, thoughts? Or and and it's it's such a win win too because Disney to not do this would be, I think, just catastrophic. Just because then you have all the original owners, and Jeff and I have talked about this, and Paul and I have talked about this. You have the original owners of the Polynesian who bought that resort, knowing that there's no one bedrooms. 
There's no two bedrooms. So now all of a sudden you're going to open up a whole new resort literally right next door and telling them, yeah, but your original points that you bought with us, you can't book there 11 months. You got to wait seven months. So for them to not do this would be horrible to those existing DVC Polynesian members. So it was absolutely the right decision to make for sure. Yep, agree. <laughs> and that, that kind of wraps up the, uh, the 2023 DVC condo. So am I going to talk you into going again next year, Jeff? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, good. I'm going with Jeff next year for sure. <laughs> okay, good. We we'll will check definitely. The group chat because you were we'll too, to go. You you were too busy moonlighting on other channels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going. Hey, Panda's making his rounds. <laughs> you, you've been on the same one, so. Yeah, I have been. I you can't care. say anything. I can't say anything. Uh, hey, Panda. No. It, yeah. December 12th of next year. Just put it in your calendar now because you don't read the group chat. We're not going to remind true. you. That's yeah. true. No, no, no. Since I know fried chicken was authored, I will be reading the chat really. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking us Could off be bacon now. next time. I don't know. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. Um, so we're going to wrap up tonight by just taking some questions. So if you do have any questions, throw them into, uh, the, how do you, uh, I've been trying to figure the out comments how to get, and we will, uh, get up to the and we'll go ones. through, uh, well, we won't do that. We're just going to take okay. any questions now. Uh, but we've got probably about a good 15 <laughs> minutes or so before we'll wrap this up for the evening. But, uh, I hope you enjoyed our, our kind of our recap of Jeff's experience at the condo association meeting. And, uh, obviously all of the exciting news, I think, um, Jeff, going into it, would you say, while, while we wait for some questions to come in, would you say that you went into that meeting expecting all the news that we actually got out of it? No. I mean, I, I was kind of expecting a poly announcement. I was expecting a little more from it, honestly, because I felt like, like for example, the member cruises, they talked about those, but they were something that we already knew, right? Like that part of the meeting was nothing, but I did like that we got a glimpse at the cabins. They did confirm Polly, which we've been waiting for. So, Derek, you might know this more than more than we do. Um, there's a question. I'll be right that came back. In, cu- question that came in about what exactly was the justification for when Copper Creek opened as a separate association from Boulder Ridge? I mean, I think, I think years. Yeah, years. that's what I think too. Yeah, it's just years. So you know, the original Wilderness Lodge is you know 2042. So I think copper is 2068. So, you know, Mm -hmm. you really couldn't, you know, open something and say, okay, it's going to expire in 2042. You know what I mean? And sell it for those prices. Sell it for those prices. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Grand Floridian and and Boulder Ridge also was already going for a a lot less. You know what I mean? Whereas Grand Floridian 2064, right? And Polynesian 2066. Like that's a decent amount of time. Those resorts already sell for a, a, a premium. You know what I mean? So it makes sense for both of those. Uh, yeah. Chris said a, a hot topic over on Disboards is whether or not the resale restrictions stay in place in the future for Riviera and uh, Villas at Disneyland Hotel. Um, I have to I have to say yes. I, I think we're going to see it come with the cabins as well. Uh, when the cabins come online, I, I think that we just see them begin to expand this concept even more into the future. Uh, maybe they get more creative with it, but I just, I, I, I can't see them going back at this point. You I know? feel like they would be more worried about the optics of going back on it yeah. than, yeah. you know what I mean? Even if it does hurt them in the long run. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's so struggling to me to even think like, why would I buy, like if I could buy the Polynesian new and I could, you know, with no restrictions on it, why would I buy, you know, the uh, the cabins why you know we, i mean because we've mm-hmm. already seen people that buy the riviera contracts they come to us to go sell them and they literally take like a 50 60 per point hit immediately you know and they're like what well, why you know i i paid 210 dollars a point and now you're telling me it's worth like 130 140 a point we're like well yeah because that's because of the restrictions that does the, oh i didn't know that i didn't know that so it's it's painful. Yeah. John Young also commented uh, regarding the Boulder Ridge Copper Creek thing. Fort a lot is not allowed less than 40 years on a leasehold. So that probably would have affected Copper Creek um, if they, if they would have tried that. So um, also Grace, uh, Derek, where, where do you get your hair done? Um, you look very dapper. <laughs> very dapper tonight. Tonight. <laughs> so, For real? Weird. I got a picture of this. I just got a cut last week and she styled it different. 
I'm not used to this. So thank you very much, Grace. I yeah. appreciate that. You, I'm, yeah, I'm earlier Panda you. said he looked like Jafar. So I want to go around. Know. I don't think any of us have really guessed on this yet. So uh, I want to go around real, qu real quick. Uh, what will the price point be for the new Poly uh, when it when it when sales go live? Two forty. Two forty. Two forty two. <laughs> like the price is right. I'll go That's a right. smidge higher. I'll say I'll say they might try to push it to two forty five, and I only say that because we're going to come into the new year here, and we're going to see yeah. them probably try to do a price increase as we head into the new year, which is pretty standard for DVC. And then Polly, I what actually think Polly, I actually think Polly might get pushed um, to twenty twenty five potentially, depending on how construction goes. I think we'll we'll either see late twenty twenty four. Or we'll see early 2025. But based off of that, I think we'll see them try to start maybe the first quarter of 2025, which remember, that's going to be October 1st, 2024, uh, with poly sales. So I think God, we it's maybe. 217 now for Riv? I think. For, uh, are we at 230? Well, so yeah, we've got a tiered system at the moment. So you've got 217 okay. for, for Riv and Alani, and then you've got 230. Okay for uh, <laughs> for the uh disneyland hotel out in california that's also where where grand um where grand uh floridian was before it sold out so that's um, so funny because I, I i remember being a disney vacation club guide way back i think this was like the late you know 2000 whatever it was and it was like god these points are going to be over a hundred dollars a point. Like, do you think that people are going to buy direct from Disney with these points over a hundred dollars a point? <laughs> and now I look back and I'm like, Oh my God, it's like two seventeen. It's crazy to me. Crazy. Yep. yep. Uh, and also, um, Derek chime in real quick. Someone, I know someone asked this, but I scrolled, scrolled by it. Where does that, where, where is current resale for poly sitting? Uh -huh. Hold on. Good question. It's one fifties ish. Yeah, about like between 150 and 160, 60. so like 155. Yeah, yeah. And keep in totally mind the big, the, 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 points, the big news know, out of this. Ones, smaller ones are going to be more per point. So like a mm -hmm. 50 point contract is going to be more than like a 200 point contract. But yeah, and is it stripped? Does it have bank points? Does it have borrow points yeah. and all that? But mm -hmm. about 155. And mm -hmm. the the big thing with Polly though, you know. Uh, no, if you buy resale, you're going to be able to use those points at the new tower based off of this news. So that's that's a huge announcement, and uh, I imagine that Unless poly contracts have been it gets eaten off. by a sinkhole. Yeah, <laughs> it pandas, it it pandas, panda, give us your theory. I don't think we've shared it in this show. Oh, yet. it's not. It's a wrong show. Yeah, no, wrong show. I was joking. It's not gonna. I saw everybody asking, "Pull like, like it's not going to be part of the same association if like stop." So I mentioned. I, I have a really important question. Yeah. Anybody in the no. chat have the score to the Dolphins game? <laughs> are we keep? Are we keeping you? We're keeping just, you. Just no, no. Like, are we no, done? No, I'm just wondering. Is that why you got up a second ago? He did. I, he went and checked. No, I had to let dogs Dolphins. Uh, Dolphins seven, seven. Titans zero. zero. Dolphins, Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Seven zero. You're welcome. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, poly owners get first dibs at booking the tower. If it's under the seven month window when they release the rooms. Uh, I would imagine that they do something similar to what they did at Grand Floridian, which is that they did have, and this is actually written in the, the home resort rules and regulations where they have the right to have a special booking period, um, that's outside the seven, 11 months. Like they don't really have to follow those exactly. So what they did was even though I think Grand Floridian, <laughs> Uh, the bookings open up within, within the seven-month seven window. window. They uh, allowed uh, those who owned the resort to have a special booking window. I don't remember how long it was, maybe around a month long-ish. Yeah. And then after that, it opened up to everyone else. I would imagine they would do something similar as well. And they did that at Riviera too. And I they did it at, they did it at the Disneyland Hotel Villas, but they started with cash first, which was really weird. Yeah. So they, they tried to get some money out of it first. Um, Maybe they just didn't have the inventory declared or I don't know. Mark asked in the chat, does the Poly News change your choice of DVC resort, the best DVC resort mm -hmm. of 2023? Not right now because it just looks like a yeah. big eyesore. Yeah, right now it's just a concrete crater. So maybe maybe Poly's going to be the resort of, of 2024. 
So it's yeah. going to be like truly. And again, I see it all the time because we live here, but you look at it now. And I remember thinking the same thing about when they built the grand Floridian. I remember being like, Oh my God, I don't like it. Look at this building. It used to be a beautiful, just beach. And now there's this big building here and it blends in perfectly. I mm -hmm. think I swear to God. And I hope that it's just going to blend in. And I think people will literally <laughs> look and go like, Oh my God, I do love it. It's perfect, but they got to figure out the transportation because that is the yes. thing that scares me yep. the most because that poly monorail is packed to begin with, let alone if you try to get on it at, at, at the Grand, it's already filled. So they got to figure something out. I don't know what, but. There's got to be a way to save certain cabins on the monorail that don't get yes. filled until they get to the poly. Yeah, the, the past family. weekend or so, it's been a nightmare there's been there's been videos and yep. stuff on social media coming out of grand floridian where it's just a it's just a train wreck or try to get to a christmas party from the grand floridian you almost can't yeah, yeah. uh good point jody brought up here uh, if the new poly building is part of the existing association can they realign the existing point charts into a different pool of charts and try to mod uh, modify basically pulling out points from the bungalows and etc um, they do have some realignment uh, possibilities so this is mm -hmm. going to be something uh, close to look at um, we potentially would have seen some early signs of that in the 2025 point charts since mm, that yeah, is when they would have, have opened those. so since we do have the 2025 charts i question whether or not they're going to do that also they know like what dvc needs wins right now wins sell points let's not piss people off let's let's get wins and, yeah uh, well i don't think they could have done it this year because then they'd have to do it within <clears throat> like make the studios yeah, more yeah, so if they have very little wiggle room but maybe maybe in 2025 yep maybe yep. <laughs> it would be nice if the bungalows were a little more a little more affordable uh jared Der derek um is there any after hours that you would consider paying for that's coming from a recent show um that we did <laughs> derek, uh, basically. Nope. nope nope and we can't I even get even him on a cruise my, i i will prove my point again when i went to epcot two weeks ago so we went to epcot everything all of the holiday shows all the you know the candlelight there every country has their own christmas show all the food booth that there's no extra ticket involved so it's all included and that's what i love about it so absolutely not no scott asked and after the new <laughs> after the new poly opens do you think they'll refurb the rest of the resort so it'll match and blend it together mm, don't think so no, i think just, we just saw no. poly get its its big refurbishment both on the cash side and on the dvc side it got it got some refurbishing over there so i think that was just a soft goods yeah it was uh, a soft goods well it was a soft goods for DVC, DVC but the hotel but, but the hotels was, really got yeah yeah but um if 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 history serves us correct i'm going to expect to potentially see some moana elements in here and i'm going to see them kind of carry over some of those yeah some of those feels that they did in the in the uh in the new cash rooms and also in the in the mildly they're, refurbished rooms over they're, there they're building a pool there right building they are pool? yeah building okay, a good. pool um and okay. and the general first floor layout also give us gives us the vibe that there is going to be some sort of new dining um so some sort of restaurant also a bar by the looks of things um the other question is what's going on upstairs so is there going to be um I think, <coughs> I think panda you might have mentioned this before if they don't put a rooftop bar up there then i want Lou cove back on the top of the building but that ain't happening that would be cool. By, by the way, I just wanted to point out something real quick. Um, I'm old enough to remember that when the when the Grand Floridian was being built, the people at the Poly and everything said, wow, they're ruining the entire lagoon. And they called it the mistake by the lake. Do you remember that, Derek? <laughs> mistake by the lake. And now look, we accept it. And that's what's going to happen also with the TV, with the Poly Tower. I think 100%. eventually we're just going to fall in love with it. Let's just wait and see what it looks like once everything gets gets said and done. Rob said they need a bar and lounge called the Spirits of Aloha. Ooh, I agree. That's perfect. That That's would beautiful. be. Rob Rob secretly works for Disney Vacation Club, and he's just putting ideas in there so that we can he see. He does have it. a very bu yeah. businessy looking photo. It is photo. a businessy photo, Rob. So like I'd hire calling you, you out. Where do something. you? Are you an Imagineer <laughs> in hiding? So. <laughs> 
John said they need a gym at the poly. I'm not quite sure who works out on vacation, but okay. I agree. <laughs> I didn't realize they didn't have one. That's how little we go to the gyms. They Uh, have to have one. No? No, No. there's not. Actually, I think the people, the Polynesian, are able to use their card at the Grand Floridian gym. Correct. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. I just remember that. Yes. Yeah. Well, folks, I think we're we're kind of getting near the end of the evening, and uh, we've we've been here for a good hour and a half, and uh, it has been a wonderful time to get to chat live with you all. So, thank you to everyone who has joined us in the live stream, um, asked some questions throughout the evening, um, and uh, and joined us on this wonderful uh, bit of DVC news. It's I, I think it's been a great way to end kind of the year. Um, on a high note with Disney Vacation Club, it's been a great year with Disney Vacation Club. Uh, also, coming next Monday, be sure to check out our 2023 year in review show where we do talk about all of that kind of uh, um, stuff that happened this year and kind of our thoughts as to what might be coming in 2024, maybe some things that we're dreaming about. Um, Super Lars said you guys should do live streams like this more often. We might if we like it. We might we might play around with it a little bit. Invite some other friends on. That is part of our goal of uh, you know twenty twenty four is to is to really have some more faces be a part of our shows. Um, maybe have some newer shows, some different types of shows, and uh, get get some more uh, feedback from the community and bring more people uh, to be a part of this. But uh, and thank I you all to, for Paul, Paul. Hold on, and Amy. I just want to personally say thank you guys because it has been quite the monumental year to say the least, but you guys at the helm of this DVC ship and DVC fan and everything else, you guys have gone above and beyond every single day. I'm always amazed. And I text all my coworkers and everybody else saying, I can't believe all that they do. So on behalf of myself, truly, I, I, you guys are the absolute best. So thank you for doing everything that you guys do. I mean, I agree 100% with Derek, and I'm very proud to be a part of what you guys built. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Yeah, uh, ditto. Aww. We're very, <laughs> very, very honored to be just a part of this community and, and get to share what we do. I, I've said it before. We, we just love educating people, love sharing as much information as possible about this amazing product that we love and that we know that so many other people do. And, uh, and also to be able to, to be able to, basically call working this evening, hanging out with this fun group of guys and, uh, and my lovely wife. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, a, a job dream come true and, uh, we're excited to see where 2024 takes us. So, um, true fact. thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, we will be back with a regular episode of the DVC show on Monday. We'll also put this up for you audio listeners out on the audio podcast worlds uh, so that you guys can listen in to this, but a lot of it won't make sense. Uh, and you'll want to see either the crazy shirts that we're wearing or something else or the finger guns <laughs> that, uh, that Derek and Jeff have done the whole evening. So, uh, By the way, someone earlier said that we all look great in our shirts. Oh. So Paul's is Disney. See? Mine's actually a brand called Park Candy, and it's like it's Disney themed. So this shirt is called Hurricanes of Hakarundas. Park in Candy like, is awesome. Yeah, as in from uh, what's the Encanto? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, look, it says it on the little thing. Uh, I'm always the one that tells everybody to dress up, and it always comes out fantastic. So you can thank me for that. <laughs> When you when when everyone real asks why we're all starting to coordinate our outfits in 2024, please know that the answer is Derek. Not the answer you would have expected, but <laughs> the answer is Derek. Um, all right, everybody, have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. Have a good holiday season. Um, we've we've still got another episode that'll come up next Monday, but until then, um, have a good one, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs>